Hi, welcome back. I'm usually in my studio. Today I'm in my kitchen. It's a little change of routine for me, but I wanted to film this because several of my friends and family have wanted to know how I make my caramel corn, and I thought the easiest thing to do would be make a quick video. So if you're not interested in caramel corn, you can just skip this and wait till my Friday video comes out. But if you are into caramel corn, this is delicious and loved by all who try it. The following things will be needed. One stick of butter, one cup brown sugar, fourth cup Cairo syrup, half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking soda, and I always have a little sieve to uh, put it through so just in case there's some lumps, that breaks it up. You will need a Pyrex dish that measuring cup, hopefully, that has a handle to help you with the process in and out of the microwave. I like to use an old-fashioned wooden spoon that is easy to stir with. You will need a brown paper bag, and I use an air popper. You can microwave popcorn that's plain, but I find this much easier. You will also need some spray pan of some sort to spray the inside of your paper bag. So that's what I'm going to start with. Excuse the noise of the bag. You really want to coat the inside of the bag because this is where you're going to cook your popcorn. That way, I put this over on the counter. You can see that it's kind of starting to soak through. That's okay. That means your caramel corn won't stick to the paper bag. So I'm going to set that aside. Oh, before I do, this is the measurement. This triangle on your bag, this is so much easier to measure. Just pop popcorn till the inside of your bag fills up to that or a tiny bit above. So... Here I go with the popcorn. I won't make you listen to that. My popcorn popper, which is Pop Light by Presto. This is a half cup measurement, and uh, that's max for what it'll take. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Put this back on top. Make sure this is on top or you're going to have a mess in the kitchen. And plug it in. Once it stopped popping, just kind of stir it around, let the kernels that didn't pop fall to the bottom because you don't want those. Get your spray bag and start transferring it. Don't just pour it in because you don't want those kernels. Pick it up like this and drop it in. Take your um, popper and make sure you empty out anything that didn't pop. There's usually a little bit left, and you want to clear that out before your next batch. Don't, don't want anything to burn. You see here's the point of the line, the triangle over here, rotate it and the triangle's right here so you can see through. Okay, I've got enough corn. The reason why I like to use a wooden spoon for this, the stirring part, is when I reach in here and the hot caramel's in there, I want to be able to reach way down and turn and twist and stir up that caramel corn and it's really hot it'll burn you and this will keep me far enough away from getting burned and in order to keep this from getting stuck to the caramel I take my spray 
whatever kind you sprayed the bag with. Go to the sink for this and spray down your wooden spoon. This keeps the caramel from sticking. So I'm going to set this aside and now show you how I mix up the caramel. To be on the safe side, it'd be best if you use eight quart, I mean eight cups, two quart bowl for your caramel mixture. You don't want it so high that it might overflow. So this is what we do. We take one stick of butter. Don't use margarine, gotta use the real stuff. I haven't used margarine in years. Now granted, this is not a healthy recipe, but it's the holidays. So I just break the butter up into little slices. It melts a little better. When you pack your light brown sugar, make sure that you pack it firmly. I just put the measuring cup inside the bag and push really hard until I feel it level. That's good enough. I want one fourth cup light corn syrup. This is Cairo syrup. It doesn't have to be Cairo, but it's what I just happened to have in the cabinet. Probably is better to measure not over the bowl, but over something else. But this doesn't pour so fast, you can't control it. Okay, one fourth cup. Go ahead and break that up. Stir it up just a little bit. I'm going to add the salt. The salt is only one half teaspoon. So make sure you have your half teaspoon. Do not measure it over there. Chances are you'll overshoot too much. I always overfill it and then I just shake it level. Okay, then discard the rest of this so it doesn't mess up your next recipe because I'm doing two batches. And I want to stir this where the butter and the brown sugar are kind of mixed up a little bit. I'm going to put this in a microwave. My microwave is 1200 watts. The original recipe for this was an 800 watt microwave. I got it oh, about 38 years ago in a newlywed class at church from a friend. So. <laughs> Needless to say, microwaves have changed a bit since there, and so I've adjusted the recipe. So, mix that up a little bit, and you don't have to cover this in the microwave because, especially when you have the eight cup, it won't um, expand so much that you have to worry about that. So, I'm going to take it, put it in my 1200 watt microwave for two minutes. Use a hot pad when getting it out of the microwave. You never know how hot your bowl will be. And it was boiling. So I want to stir this up again really well. If your microwave's not 1200, then just make sure before you take it out of the microwave that it has, it has at least gotten to a boiling point. Stir this up again and I'm gonna put it in for another minute and a half. Okay, again, use a hot pad when getting it out. You can see it's very, very hot. I'm still using a knife to stir with. This is the second batch that I've done today. But I wanna show you how when you use the baking soda, it's so cool what happens next chemical reaction. I always put it through one of these sieves so that, see that little nodules of lumps gets mixed in. And 
if you'll stop and look at it, it is starting to fizz up a little bit. I think that's just so cool. It's getting a little bigger, a little fluffier. When you look at it from the side, you can see it rise. And I don't leave it in there much longer than that. This is when I tr I'm going to shift to my... wooden spoon it already has a little bit of uh, caramel on it but you can see this is how much stuck and can imagine how much would stick if I hadn't sprayed it first so I'm going to bring the bag over and then try to reposition so you can see what I'm doing okay it's very foamy see how foamy that is it's so cool all right, I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to drizzle a little bit. Reach in there with my spoon. I do not want to get dripped on. That will burn you. I'll stir that up a little bit. Look in there. Oh, sorry about that. Look in there and see where you haven't, um, the side you haven't hit most of your mixture with. I'm just going to pour it all out. Get as much of it out as you can. You can eat what's left, what's stuck on the bowl later. And this is where this spoon comes in real handy. Excuse the noise. But you want to stir this up so that the caramel is over all the corn. You don't want any big chunks together. Okay, I feel like it's pretty well covered and what you want to do now is you want to fold down this bag so small and tight that it'll fit in your microwave and your microwave will still turn. Sometimes I crush it in like that. It's in my microwave. Thank you Trader Joe's for the bags. One minute. Watch it, make sure it's turning. Okay, that minute's up. You bring it back over, open it up. You want to stir it up real good. So that the caramel gets on every bit. how hot it is okay again wad it up 30 seconds okay 30 seconds is up getting it out of the microwave you can pour it out onto a tray that has parchment if you want that was my first batch or you can dump it in a very large bowl. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I need to go get my spoon because I do not want to reach in there with my hand. That would be painful. Okay, just want to knock down anything that's stuck. Drag it out. Look at that empty bag. Isn't that awesome? Be sure to trash that. And you just let it cool. The thing I like about... Now, it'll take the shape of whatever you pour it in. If you want to make a wreath, you can pour it into a bunt pan and let that cool. But whatever whatever you pour it on, it will become the, the shape of that. So like this is cooled. So see, I can pick this up, but once it's cooled, you just gently pick it and break it up. And it is ready to enjoy. 
Hope you like it. It's one of my family's favorites. I often make it as um, even gifts. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. I'm not usually in the kitchen. I'm usually in my art studio. But, you know, artists have to eat too. And this is a family tradition I just wanted to share. So happy Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever holiday it happens to be close to. And um, have a wonderful day.